Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with this week's playlist. But it's actually more than that because I don't even know if even myself I can play all of the things that I've chosen. And this collection of records um, came about because of the sad passing of Bernie Marsden. I've been playing a lot of his music and the album that I landed on the most, which is going to be appearing soon, is About Time 2, um, his solo album from 1979. And... I played that a lot and I've got lots of new things um, I should be playing as well. But I started to just move out from from Bernie's solo album into different directions. But wherever I went, I ended up in 1979. So I decided to put together my playlist based on that one year. And obviously, it, it's a vast um view across 1979 the amount of albums I could have picked so to narrow it down again I just thought I'll just pick vinyl albums from 1979 um, I've got obviously loads of CDs from 1979 but I thought I'm just going to keep it because you know I'm just going to keep it to one format although I am multi-format man as you know okay all you CD lovers start to panic um and there's plenty of CDs coming up but for this list they're all they're all from that year and of course in 1979 I was 18 years of age. Was I? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was actually 20. Um, there you go. I'm getting younger all the time by playing rock, and mu rock music. Um, I was actually 20 in 1979. And I would see everything I bought in 1979 at that time was a vinyl record. There was no, oh, was there any cassettes? No, don't think there was. Well, not for me anyway. Uh, I'd moved on. Um, but it's all vinyl records. So here we go. And I shall talk about some of them in more depth than others. I should just go, how am I going to fit that in? The first one, 1979, Motorhead, Overkill. Um, that is the design, isn't it? That is the design that so many people had on the back of their leather jacket or on the front of their T-shirt. It is Motorhead, the exploding dog's head. And this is still my favourite Motorhead album. Um, Overkill, Stay Clean. I won't pay your price. I'll be your sister, Capricorn, no class, which of course um, bears a very close resemblance to Tush by ZZ Top. But in those days, who cares? Um, no one really took any notice. It's a bit like uh, Wheels of Steel by Saxon, sounding like Bad Boy Boogie by ACDC, and sounding like something that B.B. King would have done decades before. Damage Cage, Tear Down, Metropolis, and Lynn from Lynn. Um, Jimmy Miller produced this, and it still is, to, to me, the perfect Motorhead album, and it still makes me smile. And as I said, I think it was last week, none of these people are still with us. So that's my first one. My next one is, I'm, and again, I'm doing these in the order. I just pull them off the shelves. So I actually have to say, I have no idea what's coming next as I lift them up, apart from the fact I'll be playing them. The next one is, oh, it's Led Zeppelin in Through the Outdoor. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm playing this because I need to explore it now. In 2023, I need to have a closer relationship with it because at the time I was desperately um, disappointed with it. I really, really was. Um, it, it's interesting, some of that, because these change colour, don't they, if you colour them in with, with the water, I'm not sure. Um, tell me if I'm right or wrong, because I've never done that. Um, but In the Evening I loved, used to play that a lot, but some of the other songs I didn't, but some of the other songs have also started to gain traction in my kind of Led Zeppelin playlists as well, because it's an album I haven't played that much. And there were so many different covers as well, wasn't there? But Jimmy Page wasn't around a lot when this was being put together. Um, but So I'm looking forward to playing this. In Through the Outdoor by Led Zeppelin, 1979. Here you go. Is it uh, Cara? I can't even pronounce the one name. The one track, the long track that I'm looking forward to playing the most. So there's that. My next album from 1979 is one of my favourites. And it's Head First by The Babies. This is when I really started to realise that John Waite is one of the best vocalists ever with regards to melodic rock. Um, Love Don't Pretty Be Right. Every time I think of you, I was one. White Lightning, Run to Mexico. This is still the definitive version of that. When you find it on a CD or a compilation, they've changed the ending. Um, 
but this is the definitive version. Uh, head first. Uh, you got it. Oh, what a ballad. Please don't leave me here. Close to free and bad company. Act. Very close. Um, Wally Stocker channeling Paul Kossoff as best as he can. And California. Um, great ballad. Produced by Ron Nivison. Um, this was when they were down to a three piece, which was a shame because they'd fallen out with. Um, it was Tony Brock, wasn't it? I think. Um, but but absolutely. Oh, no, sorry. Michael Corby. Uh, my mistake. Um, so the last of the classic kind of babies albums, really. But that I'm looking forward to playing that. Next one I have is Pat Benatar in the heart of the night. Um, this was her first album, I think. Um, and I didn't know much about this, um, but a track called Heartbreaker was being played a lot in the rock pubs that I went to. And if you know, to love me in the heat of the night, my clone sleeps alone. I think she got better after this, um, but it was a good starting point. And it's not an album I've played that much, which is why I've stuck it on the list. It's good actually picking a year like this because it's made me dig deep. An album that at the time I played to death was The Dream Police um, by Cheap Trick. Uh, this came with a gatefold sleeve. And I this was my first entry point to proper Cheap, cheap Trick as I saw them. And the songs that I really liked were This House Is Rocking, Way Of The World, um, Gonna Raise Hell, um, Voices, I Know What I Want, Need Your Love. They were, they were like two epic songs, weren't they? But I really, really like this album. I've got it on CD. I've got it in the CD box set as well. Um, but Dream Police, I think, is... Oh, isn't it a great time? The imagination behind the album covers back then. Great stuff. You can probably see just that out of sight, can't you? What might be coming up next? The next one is a double live album by UFO. Um, and this is seen as one of the best live albums of all time, is it not? And I've got the CD box set with about every well, every concert from the, what was recorded on the CD box set. And that's a separate video here. And I would recommend that as the one to get. Um, this is good. Um, he's saying good, not excellent. It is, but it's it's not an album. It's not a live album. I've played loads and loads of times. I play the, the CD box set more, actually. Um, because I think it sounds better. Uh, I also thought this sounded a bit muddy. This is my original. Um, and But if I, if you want to know what I played the most, I it would have been side three, side three, which would have been lights out, rock bottom. I think it is the definitive version of rock bottom, probably. So there's that. Another double, but not live, is Tusk by Fleetwood Mac. I didn't play this often. I was I was massively into Stevie Nicks um, and so I, I, I made a beeline for her tracks because I just thought hers would be the best and they always were to me. So Sarah, Storms, Sisters of the Moon, uh, Angel, Beautiful Child. It had a very extravagant um, cover, lots of inner sleeves and stuff um, and I think also had a poster with mine as well. I've got the, the three CD version as well, um, but I'm going to stick to the vinyl one to just try and imagine what it was like listening to this for the first time. But it was a disappointment to me after coming from rumours. But I can. But there's lots going on here. And I know that Lindsay Buckingham de desperately wanted to make an album that was nothing like rumours. And he succeeded. Um, <laughs> but uh, Stevie Nicks managed to, all of her songs just sounded like her. Great. Diogo by ZZ Top is my next one. Um, this is a great blues record. I got into ZZ Top later than this, really. Um, I didn't quite get it to start with. This comes with a oh, poster. I think this is, yes, that's right. I bought this at the time that Eliminator had come out when obviously the record label were doing their best to push all the back catalogue for ZZ Top. And that's how I, that, that's how I got into it. So cheap sunglasses, dust my broom. Uh, four of your stockings were the ones that I played the most. The next one. Oh, this was a special album to me. Huge Montrose fan. Um, massive Sammy Hager fan. He was holding the flame to me. Um, and I know that there was Gamma came out. The first Gamma album came out. What is it? 
wasn't 1979, was it? 80, 80, was it 80? I can't remember. Um, I'll do a separate gamma video anyway. But this was a typical of Sammy Hager back then. It was a bit of like mixed personality. I wanted him to just be a rock star. But but like a lot of a uh, lot of artists back then, they obviously did felt nervous about going too far into the rock metal period era or area even, and and so would have like oh, we've done a rock song, so the next one's going to be softer, and then we do another one, then we do a fast one, and I think where I was in my time on the planet, I just wanted gimme this planet's on fire, please, times five. Uh, and, and this is the this is the album that has this planet on fire on, which is a great guitar riff. I learned to play. I was playing guitar back then, and I learned to play that riff. I thought it was fantastic. But a lot of the other songs were kind of isn't wasn't quite as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Um, Never say die. No, it's not that one. Um, is a great ballad. Um, but as the years have rolled by, I've grown uh, closer to this record. And I just thought back then he was fantastic live act. He still is fantastic, Sammy Hager. Um, I love everything he does. But this is, was it Street Machine, 1979? This is when I felt he, this Capitol Records, he had a proper record label behind him, a lot of promotion, saw him at Bergen Modian. Great. Next, Steve Hackett. Um, this is probably, is it probably? No, it's it's actually a fact. Spectral Mornings is my favourite Steve Hackett solo album, 1979. And the reason for that is this is songs like Every Day, Clocks, which is just fantastic. Tiger Moth, Spectral Mornings, the title track. Absolutely fantastic record. And he obviously jumped ship from Genesis. Genesis are doing all right. Thank you very much. But the guitar sound and everything, this was a great, great album. Meanwhile, back in the world of heavy metal, my Canadian pressing of Unleashed in the East, or Unleashed in the Studio, as some people call it. Um, but I bought this because it was on special offer, and this to me was definitive Judas Priest from this period. And it is. It is, really. This is, this is you know, Exciter, Running Wild. Running Wild's one of the best Judas Priest songs ever. They don't do it very much now, do they? Um, Sinner, probably the best version of Sinner ever recorded is on here, um, with, with K.K. Downing doing his tremolo arm stuff. Ripper, Green Man Alishi. Could be the best version of Green Man Alishi ever on here. Diamonds and Rust, Vixen on Changes. Probably the best version of Vixen on Changes on here. Genocide, Great Riff, and Tyrant. Two great riffs from Sad Wings of Destiny. Yes, should have been a double. Surely. It should still be a double. Um, yes, that is classic Judas Priest from 1979. The next one was an experiment because I didn't know anything about them except one song, the hit single called Jane. Um, seriously, I know nothing about Jefferson Starship. Well, really, Jefferson Airplane, apart from White Rabbit and stuff, when I bought this. His gatefold sleeve. I knew nothing about them. I keep saying that because there was such an, an, it was such a great place to explore. I have everything by them now, airplane and starship. But there were some wonderful tracks on this, and of course, Grace Slick's not here, um, so it's a totally different band. But the songs that are on here that I really like, Freedom at Point, uh, Freedom at Point Zero, I think was the B side of uh, the single Jane. Um, Lightning Rose, Things to Come is great, just the same. And the awakening, the epic song uh, on side two. Yeah, looking forward to playing this. It'll be great. Now we're going to into a purple esque period. White Snake, Love Hunter. Away from the risque cover. This was the. This was a fast improvement to the first White Snake album. Not that it was terrible. It had trouble on, but I just thought for some reason Martin Birch didn't seem to be able to mix White Snake or grasp what they were about so much as the other stuff he was involved in. Bernie Marsden, Walking in the Shadow of the Blues. Great solo. Saw them on this tour and the previous tour. He's singing on Outlaw. Um, great, great album. John Lord on it. A Long Way From Home, I want to mention again, because it opens, it's a very pedestrian type song and not a typical rock opener for a band like White Snake. But I love it. 
I love the song. Um, who wrote that, actually? Because I can't remember off the top of my head. Coverdale wrote that, all on his own. Um, and it's a great song. I think it's one of his finest moments, actually. It's a kind of song that would have fitted in quite well to his first two solo albums. So, 1979. And while I'm here, I might as well stay with the purple stuff. Down to Earth. By this time, Rainbow were heading in different directions. Dio had left and Graham Bonnet had come in, looking like James Dean. A lot like James Dean. And uh, Richie Blackmore got a new haircut. And the band that had been in the shadows was now out of the shadows and on top of the pops. And so we had All Night Long take away the dodgy lyrics. They were in the charts. Got to number five, didn't it? Uh, was Home, the B-side, is a great track. I used to put it on the pub jukebox and um, watch everyone around the pub go, who's this? It's Rainbow. It's a rock band. Um, I loved it. But it's the second track, which in nowadays would probably be the opening track, which was Eyes of the World. It's an epic song with a great guitar solo. His guitar sound on this album, I felt, was far improved from Long Live Rock and Roll, where it sounded buried in the mix. Marty Birch again. Um... Whereas here, he's, he's in your face. His guitar sound is in your face. And this is Roger Glover. And this is also the album with Roger Glover on it. So there was more purple connections coming on here. Um, Since You've Been Gone was a hit single, which I know Cozy didn't like, but I did. Um, Love's No Friend, but Danger Zone and Lost in Hollywood. Danger Zone and Lost in Hollywood. Those two songs were brilliant rainbow songs. I play those all the time, Lost in Hollywood, the vocals, Graham Bonnet, Blackmore's guitar playing, those kind of solo solo sections of him playing guitar on his own, perfect. Um, get the two CD version if you can find it. Uh, also in here from the, my purple period, I think I have to put more together. I've done a separate video on this. Gillen, Mr. Universe. Wow. I think. I think Gillen was back, away from the jazz stuff, which I really like now anyway. But Second Sight, Secret of the Dance, Colin Towns, Colin Towns, Gillen, Towns Gillen. Just look at those song writing credits and it was you were guaranteed it was going to be an epic song. She Tears Me Down, Roller. Oh, God. As close to purple as you could get. Mr. Universe, that absolutely maniac guitar solo where everything, the production is so all over the place that even the drums vanish at one point. Who cares? It's just chaos. It's punky. It's it's thrashy. It's just amazing. Vengeance was quite tame. Um, Pudget Sound, Dead of Night, Messing the Buckland, Fighting Man. Fighting Man, 7 minutes, 28 seconds. From a previous session, of course, on the Japanese album, but because they couldn't better it. But Gillen on that is finally, one of his finest moments. Do you, do you agree, those of you who heard it? The screams on it? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And I just want to say before I move on to Bernie Marsden on this, is that Deep Purple had split up. But for a young man like me, I didn't care. Why? Because I had Gillen. I had Rainbow. I had Whitesnake. All coming round. Literally every year. I had three bands encompassing all my favourite musicians coming round three times a year instead of once every three years. I was over the moon, which leads me directly into still purple connections because John Lord's here and Coverdale and Bernie Marsden with About Time Too. Now, I mentioned this in my tribute, but after I did that tribute video, this is the album that I've played the most. And as I've played it over and over again, I've realised that just how magical this record is. Um, there are Beatlesque songs on here. You're the one. You'll have made a fool of me, etc. Sad clown. But it's the guitar playing in his voice. You see, and a lot of lot of you that saw my tribute, and I'm so pleased you said you said this. You were pleased I mentioned his vocals and his singing, because he's such a wonderful vocalist, and I think that's what made him such a great guitarist, because his lead lines followed vocal lines, because he imagined I feel. Um, that he was, as he played, he was singing those lines. And songs like Still the Same, which is six minutes and 21 seconds, is an epic song. 
about being true to yourself and his singing and his guitar playing. And Coverdale helped him on this. He rehearsed this, he rehearsed a lot of the album Coverdale's House. You know, great guy. And but the two songs I want to mention, that well, pieces of music really. Head the Ball, which is a jazz fusion par excellence of just of um, shredding, of sh of Bernie Marsden showing he can play as fast as anyone else with an absolutely jazz fusion to the hilt backing from, you know, Jack Bruce and Simon Phillips. But then flip that coin to Song for Fran, which is like Rob Buchanan or Paul Kossoff or... It's just a slow instrumental with each note singing from the heart, from the guitar. Um, this is a wonderful record, an absolutely wonderful album. Ian Pace, Cozy Powell, Simon Phillips, Don Airy, Neil Murray, John Lord. Next uh, is we're heading over the other side of the Atlantic for New England. Um, this was produced by Paul Stanley. Now, I mention that because it sounds great, but no one knew at the time that Paul Stanley only had one ear, um, which I only found out myself when I read his autobiography, that he was born with one ear. So that means he mixed this. Um, and obviously, he's never heard stereo in his life. Um, and how he must have done that, I don't know. But he did, and it sounds fantastic. But this album, of which I love New England, and again, I must do a separate video on them. I have all their albums, but this one had Never Wanna Lose You on it. You've got to listen to Never Wanna Lose You. Stream it. It's hypnotic. It's catchy. The chorus might overstay its welcome. Doesn't with me. Um, it's got the perfect chord structure. It just sounds so angst driven and there's so much yearning in the voice and the chorus. Great. Um, it had a song like Puny Unt Undernourished Kid on it, which sounded a bit punky, and it was a bit. Shall I Run Away, which sounds like ELO. There's a lot of ELO in New England, Alone Tonight. But side two opens with two songs which define them. Nothing to Fear is just an epic of vocal harmonies and crunchy riffs and melodies with an end section that has a riff that just could go on forever and then shoot which features one of the best guitar solos ever. Um, fantastic. And then we've got, you know, ends with three of the tracks, but that, I'm looking forward to playing that as well. Um, the CD remaster is out on Rock Candy, I believe. Next, we're back to the UK and Bad Company and Desolation Angels. That's pretty desolate. Now, in the back catalogue of Bad Company, this is sometimes seen as a bit of a, a low point for some reason, but actually the one before this, Burning Sky, was a lower point. But to me, this wasn't. Uh, I was at the Costamonger in Birmingham, and uh, my mate just popped to the loo, and it was the kind of pub that if you went to the loo, you'd be gone for 20 minutes because the queue was so long. And while he was gone, they played um, rock and roll fantasy, uh, which I'd never heard in my life, and they said it's the new single by Bad Company. I thought it was the best Bad Company song I'd ever heard. It was a proper rock song. It had a few of those synth, synth drums on, which is probably dated it a bit, but I loved it. I mean, my mate came back and said, missed anything. I went, you just missed the best Bad Company song I've ever heard. And um, and the album went bad. You know, Crazy Circles was the B-side. Gone, 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 Evil Wind, early in the morning. Nothing wrong with him. Gone, 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 Evil Wind, are great rock songs. Lonely For Your Love, bit of a boogie track. Oh, Atlanta, great. Take the Time, With the Machine, great. She Brings Me Love, great. I love it. Get the two CD version. I'm showing you the vinyl, but the two CD version has tons of extra tracks on it. And that's the one to get. But I love this. I love this. In fact, although I've got the vinyl off the shelf, it might be the CD one that I actually play the most. Well, it probably will be. Next, still in the UK. Ian Hunter. Ah. Uh, Ian Hunter. Do you know what? This was the first Ian Hunter solo album I ever bought. I now have everything by Ian Hunter going back in time to Mott the Hoople and upwards to his latest album now. But this is where I started. Why? Um, the reviews have been really good and I was wanted to buy something that wasn't rock music. Even back then, I wanted to explore other things, but I was unsure. It still is rock music, you know what I mean? But I wanted something that challenged me. 
I like that picture of Ian on the back. I liked the song titles, obviously Life After Death, Standing In My Light, Bastard, The Outsider, When Daylight Comes, Ships, Just Another Night. I also like the fact that Mick Ronson was on it and the whole of the E Street Band by, which was what it looked like, um, from Bruce Springsteen's band. And I played it and I fell in love with it. And I fell in love with Ian Hunter's entire approach to songwriting and life. Um, Obviously, you could say the definitive versions of Bastard are on um, Welcome to the Club, the live album, which came out a year later, and maybe they are. But Wild East, Cleveland Rocks, um, etc. Stay in my light. Again, that's probably good on, that's probably a better live version than that, but it sounded great. But it was the song called The Outsider that did it. Um, the, the guitar sound, the production of it, the kind of, again, cinematic. This could be a, a theme song from some kind of long lost Western or something. I just think it's one of it's one of the best songs ever written. Again, there's a two CD version um, with extra tracks and a live concert on it. So that's probably the one to get. Um, but this is the original version on Chrysalis, which I bought at the time. Last but one, or actually last but two actually, is REO Speedwagon and Nine Lives. And a lot of REO Speedwagon albums are a bit flawed in places. They're not maybe consistent and there's so many of them. Um, so this was, by the time this came out, which is my first introduction to the band, um, they'd been, they've made loads of albums. This wins for me not because of Drop It or Rock and Roll Music. How many songs have been called that? Easy Money, Meet Me on the Mountain, Take Me. No. It's two songs. The one that opens it and the one that closes it. Heavy On Your Love. Great riff. Great vocals. Great production. Great. But it's the last track on side two. Back On The Road Again. The track that was lifted and stuck on the Kilowatts sampler album which obviously made everyone think every track on this must be like that, and it isn't. But Back on the Road Again is just one of those songs that could just go on and on and on, and I wish it did. Great guitar solo, a great platform um, for the guitar solo for Gary, uh, which has to do, sorry for pronouncing his name wrong, you know, he's sadly missed, but wonderful, wonderful. Um, other albums came along which beat this, the one that came afterwards, Certainly did, um, but that one will say that for another day. And then last but one, it is this time, um, but I won't talk much about this one because it's going to be in my Van Halen review, which you've already already seen or about to Van Halen 2. There was a little bit of disappointment, perhaps, um, in compared with Van Halen 1, but came with a poster where Mr. Roth broke his ankle just after that photograph was taken. Um, and this is my original copy, not the one I'm going to be reviewing. Didn't come with the inner sleeve or anything. As I've been playing a lot of music um, 1979, I felt like I couldn't not include Van Halen 2. So my final record, gosh, this has been, a, been an epic one, hasn't it? From 1979 is an album I've done a separate video for, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I had to include it. It's Riot. Narita. This is a, my, a Canadian import version. I love this band. I love every version of them. I love everything. I mean, I, you know, Mark Rail on guitar. He's sadly no longer with us. Um, a, a, but a guy who could flip the style of his guitar playing to whatever was going on. The fact he went off into the desert somewhere and learned how to do power metal in the mid 80s and came back like that when he is more kind of blues and hard rock based what a fantastic guy i have a connection of course before i've mentioned this that you know i was in a band called the handsome beasts and um i loved riot and the the head of the record label said phil here's a bit of news you might like because he knew i liked this band he said that riot are currently on tour in america and before they go on they play break by the handsome beasts as their warm-up song and to, and to hear that this band that I loved were playing my song before they went on stage meant a lot to me. Um, this is, 
it is a it is a metal album, I suppose, but it's more hard rock in my mind. Um, the the metal tracks are things like Road Racing and Narita, but the, the song that I like the most is Waiting for the Taking. Um, it's a great opening song. It kind of, if I say the word meander, it, I don't mean that in I mean that in a positive way. It kind of it just rolls. It just goes. Uh, and at the end, there's a guitar. The guitar solo comes in over the. It, it's one of these solos that starts at the low register and slowly meanders up. And I, I could, I just do not tire of hearing that song. It just makes me feel great. It's a great, great, great rock song. So that is my selection of albums from 1979. So what have I missed? Which verses are you going to play? If you have any, or what are you playing anyway? You don't have to be from 1979. But if I if I have missed something out, and then let me know. Um, but thank you for being here, and thank you for all of your comments and all of your support. It means a great deal to me. Thank you for all my new patrons and YouTube members that recently come on board. There's lots of new um, videos coming out just for you. So take care, everybody. Music is the doctor and the healer, and keep spinning those discs, and I shall see you very very soon.